Good afternoon. How y'all doing? Sabbath is coming in, so I like to add a whole house to you. So, especially during the COVID, we do have limited people that come by to the Philadelphia house. So I like to make sure everything is extra special. So yeah, this is what I look like when I'm doing my hair is brushed or cake but I got my little, you know, I work around the house gear. Got to make sure everything stays clean. King Giovanni's birthday is coming up. Got to get ready for the memorial that I was too weak to have last year. But we're getting geared up. What to do? What to do, family? You know, so um, I wanted to sit down and talk with y'all for a bit. I wanted to, uh, I'm taking my break, waiting for the kitchen floor to finish drying. You know, I, I, I've never had, well, actually, that's a lie. I, I had uh, three maids in my life, and um, they, uh, they don't clean as good as I do. See, I got OCD severely. And, and and if my house ain't cleaned a certain way, it, it's a problem. <laughs> like, I used to be late for meetings because I couldn't leave the house unless my kitchen was spotless. Like, the, the rest of the house could be a little messy, but the kitchen had to be spotless. I mean, not a dish, not a cup, you know, not a napkin, not 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 a little a, a little juice stain on the floor. Like I I'm really nutty like that when it comes to keeping your house clean. You can ask any of the girls that I was in jail with. Like I was tear worker for a reason because I'm like if I gotta live here with y'all, we are not gonna be animals. I'm I'm gonna beat my case, but while I'm here, I need it clean. I need it orderly. You can ask all the girls, CCDOC out in Chicago, Division uh Division Four, no Division Five. To David, that tear went from a hellhole to a well-ran neighborhood by the time I was gone. Them girls was using table rags, you hear me? They was like, uh-uh, mother, don't play that. And, and that's just me. So, you know. So, yeah, I it was so interesting. I went to the Freeman last night to go support Sife and the Found. And Sife's new single is out. And him and him and Just Mandy, hashtag Just Mandy, killed it last night. And I was on stage with him and we played around a little bit. And, you know, the spirit caught me and I was just like, yo, I need to let these people know why I'm really here. You know, so um, I shared my thoughts, you know, about the fact that I, I think Dallas is deserves to be the next music super city, especially for urban music in the country right now. Um you, I, I thought it was only like 25 Grammy Award winners. Apparently, it's like over 100 Grammy Award winners here in the DFW area. And about 25 to 30 of them are multi-Grammy Award winners and don't nobody know it. Like, how you got that much dope in one area and only two or three artists blow, but there's 50 artists here that are credible. And of that 50, there are 10 that are guaranteed megastars. Guaranteed megastars with just the right backing the right marketing plan, the right business. There's no reason why The Found should not be one of the hottest bands in the country, not in Dallas, not in Texas, in the country. I'm telling you right now, I would put The Found up against The Roots any day. And right now, considering how, how little The Roots creativity is, The Found would murder The Roots. In a live show, in a battle of the bands, The Found would murder The Roots. Them niggas is fat and comfortable. The found, they hungry. Man, I've played with every last one of them dudes. I would hire any of them any day. And so when I got to talking about, you know, y'all need to support your own and you need to believe in yourself like I believe in you and stop letting all these relics dictate your future. Niggas say, oh, you, you, she fucking up the vibe. No, I'm not fucking up the vibe. Because see, two of the people that was in me, who I happen to love, will always love and have great respect for RC and um and, and Goodfoot. I love y'all. You know I fucking love y'all. RC, me and you share a birthday, which is why it's so disappointing to me that you punking down to this fake ass fucking bitch. And then you gonna send Michelle to tell me to get off the stage because I'm killing the vibe because I'm saying, hey, y'all need to get y'alls. It's time to come and get y'alls. And y'all want to stay on the plantation? 
I'm gonna give you my list of with Erica Badu. Erica Wright from South Dallas. There's three things that bothers me about her when it comes to being an artist. The first thing first, we're veterans. And we're legends in the game. So we're supposed to be supporting the future. You know what I mean? We're supposed to be pushing the future because we're not the future anymore. We're the past. We're the future. And the only thing that makes us relevant is what we can ourselves in the future. So for me, I want to be on the right side of history and I want to help make history. I don't want to be history. I want to help make history. And I'm telling you, there are some groundbreaking artists in this area. I've been watching them now at this point in time for years. Shit. I, I would rather see The Found playing on a Tonight Show than The Roots any day. Any fucking day. They're, they're one of the greatest fucking things here in this goddamn city. And the country don't even know it. I go live last night. I got niggas from Philly to New York to Virginia to Boston. Talking about, yo, I wish I was there. And motherfucking Dallastonians don't even show up to see the greatest fucking thing that's sitting right there in their face. I got the whole East Coast ready to come to the free man and show y'all how to fucking party. <laughs> it's unbelievable. And I couldn't believe that. Um, What about D'Angelo? What about Michael? Michael's a great artist. Michael has his own personal demons. You need to ask somebody who, who fucked with Michael like that about him. Ask Deanna Williams about Michael. Deanna Williams know a lot about Michael. She'd be better qualified to talk to you about Michael than me, considering how close they were. You know, Or, or you could ask our former manager, Lindsay Guion, about Michael. Lindsay got a story. Lindsay can tell you that. I Michael is Michael. <laughs> I've known him for years. Never slept with him. Mm -mm. I love him, but he's too short for me. He's just too short for me. I I think he's sexy, but he's little. You know, he, he's he's a, he's a bite size. I, I like big. Uh, you know what I mean? I like gorillas. <laughs> I like beautiful gorillas, but I like gorillas. Michael's not. Yeah, ask Deanna Williams or Lindsay Guion about, about Michael. Or Angie Stone, for that matter. She She's definitely more qualified than all of us, considering that she has a child with him. Um, I ain't hating. Who hating? I ain't had nothing but good things to say about Michael. He's just not my type. What, I can't have a type? I, I can't I can't want to love up on a big old, ugh. You know what I mean? He a morsel. I mean, music soul child is adorable. So is Belial. They, they bite sized men. I, I need. Ah! <laughs> I roll with the big dogs. I can't. I can't fuck with no shih tzus. You know what I'm saying? Like my dog is a bull boxer. Like I can't even get like a little cute dog. <laughs> I gotta have a monster. You know. So I mean, my type is my type. I rock with what I rock with. I think they're all adorable. You know what I mean? And, and, and to all y'all women who love bite sized men. Please, feast on. Glenn Lewis. I actually know Glenn is off limits. He's married now. He's married now. I'm very proud of Glenn. Glenn has grown up to be quite the awesome man. I'm proud of Glenn Lewis because he survived Philadelphia. <laughs> Not too many people survived Philadelphia, boy. And Glenn came from Canada. It was like culture shock, but I gave him some advice 20 years ago when he learned how to swim. And now he's fishing for himself. So big up to Glenn Lewis. Um, but yeah, I mean, why do we give all of these undeserving people so much power when they won't give anything back? So I, I'm going to give you my, my, my list of grievances, my three grievances with Erica Bado. Number one, she's a fraud. See, when the Neo Soul Movement first came out, it was supposed to be about black empowerment. We were supposed to be the other white me. You know what I'm saying? We were supposed to be the chicks that were representative of the fact that we don't have to shake our ass. We don't have to be half naked. We don't have to put on a whole lot of makeup. Like that was the beauty of it. We were we were showcasing our natural beauty. And and as the years have progressed and gone by, there are some chicks like me, Floasis, Natalie from Flow Tree, Lettucey, Asia from Kendrick. Even Jasmine Sullivan has stayed true to herself. 
you know, but you got people like Jill, you got people like, you know, Chrisette Michelle, you got people like, like Erica Badu, who all of a sudden became so sexualized and, and now it's all about pussy juice and, and, and how much dick I can suck and I want to be Claire Huxtable and Vanessa Del Rio. That's the stupidest fucking shit I ever heard in my life. A lady will never be a hoe and a hoe will never be a lady. Now, what I was taught by real grown-ass pimps is treat a lady like a hoe and a hoe like a lady. Maybe you fell for it and you believed it. I don't know. But whatever the case may be, it was unfair to the neo-soul movement for these women to start portraying, you know, these, these characters that were so far, it, it, it cheapened what we did. India Irie, it cheapened what she did. Me, it cheapened what I've done. Floetry, it cheapened what they did. Kindred Family Soul, it cheapened it. Y'all bitches made us cheap. We had standards. We had we had we had we had pride, which is why I kept my street life so far away from what I did because I never wanted it to taint the message. And you don't have to be a hoe to sell a record. And that talent and a beautiful smile and honest words can win Grammys. So that was the whole point of the Neo Soul movement. So if you're not on that 20 years later, then it means that it was just a gimmick. So yeah, I charge you with fraud, you know, and there, there are those of us who are really true to it. I haven't had a perm in my hair in over 20 fucking years. That's real. This is me. I've never had a facelift. I've never got my titties enlarged or reduced. I'm the shit all by myself. That's what I teach on my stage. Second grievance, you're greedy, bitch. You're too fucking greedy and you're selfish. You're a fucking miser and you don't share. You don't play well with others, Erica Wright. You miser. You attention whore. You make everything about you. Everything's all about you. It's all about you. The soul movement in Dallas is all about you. The queen, the queen, the queen. The queen of what? The queen of lies? The queen of whores? The fuck you queen of? Let's talk about the, the Forest Theater. Now, this woman is a Booker T. Washington graduate, alumni. Because of her talent, her, sex, her, sex, her, her success, and her fame, she was required to create a future for future graduates just like herself. Especially being from South Dallas and making it all the way to the big time. It was her job to reach back. Now, Forest Theater could have been something awesome. And when I first got down here, I was told that she owned the Forest Theater and then she sold it. But the truth is, which I found out, and these are facts. And if they're not, you can sue me, Erica. You can sue me if I'm lying, Erica. Call your lawyer. Ask him to watch this broadcast and see if I'm lying, Erica, so he can come and sue me and hit me with a big fat gag order. You never owned the Forest Theater, Erica. You were only leasing it. And then Master P came and made a proposition. Erica Wright. You South Dallas hood rat. Master fucking P wanted to bring money here and dump it into Dallas, not his hometown, to take you from being a leaser to being a co-owner with his company. And with the kind of money and the kind of connections that Master P has, can you imagine what that could have done for the music community here in Dallas? Oh my God. Like Master P puts his hands on something and he makes it happen. And because you couldn't do it all by yourself, you turned him down and then you gave up the lease. That's how selfish you are, bitch. That you would rob this city. Your city, where you're from. Your alma mater, where you're from. That you would rob them of that jewel. I fucking wish Master P would come to me and ask me if I want to go in business with him with the Fox Theater. I wouldn't care if he only offered me 5%. I'm in. 
with what you can do? Hell yeah, I mean, even if it's just 5%. Because what comes from that is so much bigger for the glory of Dallas. But see, you got to put yourself on the sidelines, see, and put Dallas first in order to be able to see that. You selfish bitch. That's my second grievance with America. Now, my third grievance is what you've done to your sister, Nate Rock. Y'all sent her to Philly many years ago. And I sat her ass down for acting like anybody gave a fuck about the name Badu in Philly. We made the name Badu cool. We did. Not Atlanta, not Dallas, not Houston, not LA, not Boston, not New York. Philadelphia made the name Badu famous. <laughs> And your sister came up there thinking that that shit meant something to us. And I had to tell her, I had to tell her about herself. And I did in front of the whole fucking club. I, I, I told her about herself so bad that Lonnie Lynn called me the next day and said, can't we all just get along on some Rodney King shit? And I said, tell that bitch to fucking come to me and say it a goddamn self. I told you that, Lonnie. And you can call your lawyer too if I'm lying to her. To give me a gag order and, and sue me for defamation of character. You called me begging me to take my hand from around that bitch's neck. Lonnie. You was a sucker then and you a sucker now. You lame ass fool. Let that bitch play you. You ain't even know. If she was playing three card Monty with a pussy on that baby though, wasn't she? Is it M1s? Is it somebody else from Dead Press? Is it Jay Dillard? Is a common no. The winner is TLC. She played all y'all fucking niggas for fucking fools. And y'all fucking ride with us too. I hate to see it when a man let um a bitch clip his balls off. It's not it's not good. I don't know if she putting something in her food to fool all of you very talented and brilliant men. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know if she, she, she's, you know, giving you some kind of psychotropic drugs while y'all having sex with her to make y'all think that she about something other than herself. Making herself relevant fucking rappers. Because Lord knows you're not relevant with your talent, bitch. You're not relevant at all. You're clever, but you're not brilliant. But you are clever. And you can carry half a tune. And you can complete a song. But you're not brilliant, Erica. Erica Wright, you are an ordinary, average artist. That's why you hold brilliance back. So nobody notices how dingy your fucking t-shirt is. Because see, you won't stand next to somebody with a brilliant white tee when they might see all of those mustard stains that you, you, you forgot to put bleach in the water. No, you like to stand next to dingy motherfuckers, dirty motherfuckers, so you look clean. Come stand next to me, Eric. Let's see how clean your t-shirt is. Bet you got some hot sauce stains, something on it. Bet you. <laughs> that's that's that that's that's another grievance though. That's a part that that's a part B to the second grievance. Third grievance, what you've done to your sister. I got two words for you. It's called the Flaming Lips. Go check it out. There was a big debacle like almost 10 years ago. For whatever reason, this bitch went and took her sister into this video shoot for a song, a, a, a rock remake that she made with the Flaming Lips, who are a very avant-garde, over-the-top, highly provocative. I don't even know why she would trust the niggas with these images. These bitches stripped down naked. They, they throw body paint all over them. Erica in the video covered in some white cream in a bathtub. They rock ass naked. They got gold dust all over her vagina. They sitting there smacking her vagina lips. You can see the gold dust pop off of her. It was one of the most horrifying things I've ever seen. It was online for about 10 days before YouTube was forced to break it down. I guess I guess Erica spent some money on that, um, on that lawyer. And um, it was just sad. 
it was very sad. And, and then it, they kind of just washed it away and they, they spent a lot of money on public relations to, to put her on other things, other positive things. So people wouldn't realize you just prostituted your sister for the whole fucking world to see. That was 10 years ago, and she still ain't put no album out on her sister. Her sister hasn't even gotten a single. She couldn't even get on a remix. You put your pussy, your sister whole pussy out for the world to see, to be um, de degraded by these white dudes who clearly ain't getting no fuck about y'all because you thought the shit wasn't coming out, and them niggas dropped that shit on that ass. <laughs> oh, they dropped that on you. You put your sister whole pussy out for the whole fucking world to see, and you still ain't even put no album out on her. So if you can do that to your sister, why wouldn't anybody believe what you did to Ndambi, who is your best friend, who you swag jacked all the way to the fucking bank and then blocked her at every turn? You ungrateful bitch. You did to Ndambi the same thing that Jill did to me. And me and Dombi, we ain't want no smoke. We just wanted to see y'all succeed. We also wanted to succeed as well. We let y'all ride. And then, you, and then you, you vilify her. You vilify her. Make people feel like they, they got to choose between her and you. Why would they have to choose? Why can't the artists of this, this, this area have you both? Y'all came up together. You started together. What makes your history any more relevant than Ndambi's? Especially considering that everything you wish you were, that Ndambi is, that you still covet. You covet in Dombi. To covet is a sin, Erica. Wanting to be someone else so bad that you're willing to try to take everything that they have and everything that they are. So you can feel better about your worthless ass. And you prostituted your sister. You let these white dudes make a fool out of you and your sister. And she still ain't got no album out. And they is actually a decent artist. Like, Honestly, I'd rather listen to a Nate Rock album than listen to, to one of your albums, Erica. Maybe that's why ain't nobody ever heard it. Like, when, when Solange finally had that, that big moment with Seat at the Table, like, I was so happy for her, you know, because people don't realize how awesome Solange is. She's a great writer. Like, she's a fucking amazing writer. And she's an excellent artist. Like, if you listen to um, Love on Top, if you know Solange, you know that that's her whole swag. Like, Love on Top was one of Beyonce's biggest records. Shout out to, to Solange. Seat at the Table was brilliant. And um, thank you for introducing the world to Sanfa. Like, people, they really don't recognize, you know, greatness when they see it. They they like the glitz and the glamour and the, and the baubles and the, the awards and all the shiny things. But they don't, they don't appreciate the work. They don't. They don't appreciate the work. Shout out to Solange. I still listen to your album at least three times a week, and Cranes in the Sky is one of my favorite records that you've ever written. Fucking brilliant. Really brilliant. Marriage and family life has has evolved you into such an amazing artist, so shout out to Solange. Shout out from Dallas. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, those are my list of grievances, you know? If you'll treat your own sister like a whore and she can't even get a record, you can't get R.C. to produce an album on her, but why would you get him to do that when you don't even support his albums? Like, why are y'all so fucking worried about supporting a bitch that don't give a fuck about nobody else but herself? She cut the water off. She shut y'all out. You ain't even know it. Erica Badu and the Badu uh, organization, or whatever the fuck they are, have caused Dallas so much money, so many opportunities, being selfish and being greedy. That's why I came here. I came here to set it all free. I came here to move that bitch around like she was in cell box block fucking four. I came to put that bitch a PC. Somebody put that home in protective custody. Because it's about to get hot. <laughs> move her around. Get her moved to a lesser tier. Where she can go be the nigga that she is. And let these brilliant artists win.
let them eat. Michelle, um, manager for the found, I'm calling you out. I'm calling you out as a betrayer to your own city. The found is one of the hottest things I've seen in the past 10 years. I'd play with them any day. And all this time you've been their manager and nothing has happened. So I'm going to put it out here. If y'all are willing, if y'all, the found band, are willing to give me Jaguar right six months, I guarantee you we will have a hit album and your streams will go through the roof. How about that, Michelle? How about we compete to see who's more um, effective at breaking this brilliant band that you can't seem to break? Even with Erica Badu's help. Oh, that's right. That bitch don't fucking help nobody. You should have chose the right side of history, Michelle, rather than running back to Sean G. I'm sorry, not Sean G. There's so many haters out there. I get them confused. But rather than running back to Rob Ski last night to report how I did a call to arms on stage in front of all of Erica Badu's victims. I know what you're doing. <laughs> My manager is Cecilia. He taught me all about how to see liars. When I asked you what you knew about the FUBU Mobile Gala last night, Michelle, your eyes went up and to the left twice. Then you focused back. Then they went up and to the left twice again. And your carotid started banging. See, that's a lie detector. That's how I know when people are lying to me, like you lied to me last night. So since we're not friends, and since you're a fraud, and you're a minion for the Badu cult, <laughs> let, me give you, let, me, let me give you something to work for. In six months, I'm going to break your bank nationally, possibly internationally. I have a pretty big following these days. I'm going to break the found since you can't. And if y'all really want to blow up right from here, from your own home, and not have to run around chasing other people when you're already stars, <laughs> if that's what y'all really want, come see me at the Philadelphia house. I put my word on it. In six months, you will be the hottest band in the nation. I'll see to it. I'll stake my career on it. <laughs> see, you should have never fucking fucked with me, Michelle. Now I'm going to show your band why you are ineffective as a manager. So they can actually go hire a manager. That can help them. Rather than pigeonholing them. For the glory of Erica Bad. Don't. Erica, bad dude, bad you. <laughs> I'm shutting down the plantation. You see this? You see this? You see that? Look at that. That's history. You see that? Recording Academy. Philadelphia Chapter Heroes Award. All right, you see that? Look at who this award belongs to. Malik Malik B. Abdul Basit. And it was issued in April. April 26, 2004. I'm really ready to talk now. I got it home. Mommy well, said I could hold on to it for a while. So I could do these interviews and make sure that the world knows who her son was. See. This is who her son was. He was a hero. And Umi's letting me hold on to this. So I can tell the tale of how it came into my possession. When it should have been in hers. When it should have been in Malik's. Yet, 
the roots came to the funeral and they did not bring this award. Why didn't they bring the award to the funeral? Amir, Tariq, come on. James Poyser, Mark Kelly, Tina Farris, the OK Player Office, where most definitely this, this award was sent to. So how did Jack get it? How do I have it in my possession? Malik B never even knew that this award existed. He never knew. He has a Grammy Heroes Award. You see that? That is the official Grammy. This is a Grammy Award. The Heroes Award. I'm ready to do that interview y'all been waiting for. Y'all think I've been doing interviews? <laughs> <laughs> Boom! I told y'all I was only dropping hand grenades. This right here, this is the bomb. This is the bomb. How did Jaguar Wright get Malik B's award that was in the OK Player office for 16 years and he never knew it existed? Why didn't them niggas bring it to the funeral and give it to his mother? So I'm trying to figure out who I want to have this conversation with. There's three people that I want to talk to, that I would talk to about this. TMZ, Wendy Williams. Actually, let me let me re let me reverse that. Wendy Williams, TMZ, or Vlad TV. I, I believe that all of your outlets. Uh, very, very, very credible. Me and Wendy have history. We had a great interview years ago. Maybe we should have another one. I mean, she is a black woman. She knows what it's like to be fucked with in this business. And she's been shitting on y'all niggas for years. And I've always rooted for her in the background because I love it. I love to see a woman grab her imaginary nuts and go in on y'all fools. Big up to Wendy Williams for surviving the game and changing it and evolving it. You went from radio to one of the largest TV shows and you are a titan on the home shopping network and these niggas hated on you every step of the way because you was telling the truth back then just like I'm telling it right now. <laughs> they always get mad when you tell the truth but the truth will set you free. Look at Wendy Williams. The truth didn't just set her free. It set her up. <laughs> She's living on your hoes. On all your secrets. Hey. Yeah, maybe I should talk to Wendy about this. Wendy was the one that named us the Dirty Backpackers. She has connection. Maybe me and Wendy should talk about this. How Jaguar Wright got Malik B's Grammy Award, his, his Heroes Award that he never even knew existed. I don't know if Art is still um, Wendy's right hand man, but Art. Get up with me. Get up with me. I, I think if anybody deserves this interview, it, it's Wendy. But shout out to Lovely T. Lovely T, you're a very, 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 very inquisitive woman. And um, outside of Wendy Williams at this point, you're the only uh, vlogger or blogger that I, I would talk to. So, I mean, if you want to um, hit me up on Instagram and, and just jump in my DM. I like the way you move. You know, I I, I went back and watched um, some of your recent videos. Like I've seen them. I, I think I got, I think I subscribed to your page a couple years ago just because I like the honest way um, you do what you do. But right now, black women should be supporting black women. And um, I, I think, I think you're awesome. So, you know, if, if you want to do a, a, you know, a video chat or go live or, um, or, you know, meet in a Zoom or whatever, you know, I'm, I'm down for that. You know, because I bang with you. And the truth is, you were working your way to a whole lot of things that I haven't disclosed yet. You're very smart. I give you that. You know how to read, you know how to read a breadcrumb trail. So, you know, I, why would I leave you in the dark? You're a reporter of the truth just like I am. So, yeah, shout out to Lovely T for keeping it a bean. I bangs with her. I like you. Me, me and the interviewer. <laughs> Love you to death. We really do. We think you're a smart lady and 
so yeah, outside of Wendy Williams, um, you're the only other person, lovely T, that I would uh I would do an interview with at this time. So um, and your interview I'll do. For free. So yeah, um, so that's that's uh that's where we at right now. This is this is the game. That's the new hashtag for the day. How did Jaguar Wright get Malik B's Grammy Award? Hashtag, what happened, OK player? <laughs> did y'all actually think I was going to go this hard and not have a bomb? I can't wait to tell the story of how I got this one. And it's also going to make really excellent and great footage for my documentary, Digging Up the Roots. See? I've been digging up y'all roots. I've been digging them up. Hashtag, how did Jaguar Wright get Malik B's award? Hashtag. What happened, OK player? Hashtag. Digging up the roots. <laughs> oh, I never played checkers as a child. I only, I only played chess. And this right here, my niggas, is what you call check. Mate. Should have known better. Especially you, Sean. Oh, Sean, she. Gonna get inside your books, Sean. Me and Malik are gonna get inside your books. And I hope they give you five flat in the fed. I hope they sing your ass the long poke. Take that sweet meat over there. <laughs> Or maybe they'll drop you off here in uh, Fort Worth and I'll come and visit you and I'll put money on your books so you can get some ramen, bitch. Ho ass nigga. But me and Malik, we gonna set you straight. We're gonna stole the babies. Jesus, I'll see y'all later. They stole somebody, baby. <laughs> Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord.